Hi, this is Britt Whitman with WorkSpan TV, and I'm here with Steve Harris, luminary in the field of executive compensation, and we're going to talk about the dangers of one-size-fits-all programs. So Steve, give me a little flavor on where we are right now and how we've come to find ourselves in this situation with all the external influences that are helping us design comp packages. Well, you know, uh, Britt, if we go back historically, uh, once upon a time, and uh, maybe this was a little bit after the caveman days, but historically we had base salaries and there really wasn't a lot of customization of executive compensation programs. We fast forward to more recent times, certainly the last 10, 20 years, and we've had executive pay programs that have been highly varied from uh, you know, one industry to another, from one life cycle stage of a company to another to another. And those variations have helped in many cases for companies to create better focus on what it is they need to do to be successful. Now what we find ourselves in is an environment where we have various uh, legislative and regulatory uh, influences and governance influences like Congress through Dodd-Frank, uh, the Federal Reserve through the horizontal review of large banks and their various other review efforts of banks. Uh, we have ISS and what they want companies to do and all of this is driving us down an increasingly narrowing funnel of practice. We're becoming a lot more like one another in how we pay than uh, dissimilar and, and kind of tailored to what's right for our companies. And therefore, I would suggest that this is not nearly as effective uh, of an approach and it has uh, uh, unintended consequences built into it that none of these organizations have contemplated. And that's kind of where we are and it looks like where we're headed. I think that's a good point. This, a lot of this seems to be knee-jerk reaction to specific situations and the time frames seem to be shrinking. I mean, we used to talk about long-term compensation, options out to 10 years, performance plans three to five, and now all you hear about is one and three-year TSR. And uh, the, the advisory firms and a number of other external forces that are looking at exec comp, the pressures seem to be very much on get in line, whereas we always start with the CDNA and say, here are the unique business circumstances for our enterprise, and then somehow that doesn't translate into, here are the unique compensation programs that drive the behaviors that get those results. No, it, it, that's exactly right, and, and you know, what, what that uh, uh, lines up with, it, you know, for some companies may make sense, but it's, I, I would suggest the minority companies. For instance, TSR. TSR is a great big push. You know, I get it, we all get the TSR, total shareholder return, is uh, a very relevant measure that's aligned with shareholders. But many companies uh, have moved into TSR in part because uh, ISS views that as the performance measure. And I have yet to find a company, even though I've had the privilege of working with many fine ones, that has been able to tell its management team how to go out and get more TSR. It just doesn't have line of sight. And while it may be a useful metric, it, it is not the be-all, end-all. I could name some companies that do not have a long-term performance plan, or until recently have not, but yet they've had a very performance-based culture. What's wrong with that? Well, according to ISS and others, there's a lot wrong with that. So now they, they go out and they develop a long-term performance plan uh, just because that's where the herd is going, or that's where they're supposed to go because of good governance uh, practices, and they don't need it and it's hard to do, and they create some dysfunctional uh, effects within the company. Nothing good about that. That's very interesting. Let's go there. Um, our, you sit in many compensation committee rooms. Are compensation committees looking for an, the ability to customize, to do what they need to do? Do they understand the concerns of the unique situation? Or are they more focused on our institutional investors are the ones that elect us to office, and so we have to listen to what they are being told by the advisory services. Yeah, compensation committees are really trying to do a good job. So let me start there. Uh, these are bright people, uh, men and women who have uh, great backgrounds. Uh, they're, in almost all cases, very well qualified and well-meaning. Unfortunately, what's happened is that they're also very anxious about the environment that they're in. And they're not anxious about being sued, they're anxious about reputational risk. And so there's a tendency to try to go to a safe zone and not take risk, and I think that's where the problem is. And so I look at uh, well, what are the best practices, and what does ISS say, and what would be we might be criticized on, and you know that tends to drive decision making more than it should. There are some committees certainly 
in my experience, that are, 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 are clearly uh, stepping out and they're saying, look, you know, we get it if uh, we're not going to be popular for a little while, but this is right for our company. I don't think there's enough of that. And there's not enough of that because we have this reaction to say on pay, we have this reaction to, uh, you know, the, the media and so forth, and it's, it's just created that level of, of, um, of movement uh, away from the, the edges and toward the middle of the fairway. And hey, it's a good place to be in golf, but not always a good place to be in business. So we've had a, a lot of pressure to come to the center and a lot of unintended consequences. I, I think I agree with you. I think comp committees are absolutely trying to do the right thing, but now they seem to always have that, they do the calculation of we have to pick our battles and how much more discretionary effort is it gonna take to look different than the mass on this one element and do I want to have the fight or is it just easier to move to, as you say, the middle of the fairway and I know I won't get contested. And uh, I, I think that's a huge concern for going forward. So where do you see that going? Do you think there's going to be more pressure? You know, take me out a couple of years. Have the institutional investors taken over? Do we just have checklists at this point? Is it Has it become regulated or do we see that the unique position every company's in starts to play out in how they reward and recognize the performance of top key individuals. I think to some degree, um, you know, our our reaction uh, in a more you know to a more homogenized approach to compensation has has been reactionary. So I think it has been uh, knee jerk. I think uh, it will continue to a degree, um, but I don't think it will go as far as some others. So for instance, if we look to Europe. Uh, they have gone very far. The UK, they had say and pay 10 years before we adopted say and pay. And if you look at what's happening in the UK right now, uh, they've gone to a mandatory uh, policy oriented vote as well as a backward looking advisory vote. And they have just a, a, an enormous amount of governance lockdown on how they can pay. Now, no, no, uh, um, no insult to our UK brethren, but I would much rather not be like that and have our business be much more entrepreneurial, high growth, create more jobs, that type of thing. So I think we're going to move in that direction for a little while, but I, I don't think we'll go all the way because our shareholder base in the U.S. is very different. If you look at the top 20 shareholders of most companies, top 30, you find you know some shareholders that may have 5% or 7%, but you have many that have 3 2%, 1%, less than 1%. And in the U.K., you tend to have more of a concentration of share ownership. So they can get involved more in swaying that. So it's much more diverse here. I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think it's very important that, uh, however, we do everything we can to push against that, uh, those forces that are driving this down this path. So, you know, ISS, uh, again, not to try to jump on ISS, but they say we should have at least 50% performance-based. They do not consider stock options as performance-based. Well, if you've ever held an underwater stock option, you know <laughs> that they are performance-based. So I think it's important for companies to pick their spots and to say, look, for our company right now, we need to use maybe stock options, or we don't need to use performance-based in a prescripted weighting or amount or way, or we don't need to use TSR, we need to use other metrics that are better for our business. That's what companies need to do, and I think they will uh, come around to that, but I think all of us need to help that along, and we have a role to play. Yeah, I think that's absolutely key. I think, say, on pay, the, it, whether it was an intended consequence or not, the conversations with shareholders have become much more robust. And I think if we can continue the conversation, and particularly continue the education, there's a way to continue to shore up the belief that every enterprise is faced with a uni unique set of circumstances and needs to respond to them in a unique way and that will help fight the checklist approach to making sure everybody's in the middle of the fairway. But I do have the same concerns you do, that, that uh, we're getting pushed very much um, on the homogeneity front, and so uh, I hope that your prediction comes true. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I don't think we'll go as far as, as, uh, as the UK, but if we think about the governance environment globally, it really is kind of coming together. And I think what we have outside the U.S. is more of a populist push on this, in addition to the share ownership uh, differences that I outlined. Um, hopefully we do not get to the populist push here. I don't think that we, we will. Um, and we create the jobs, we create the value for shareholders, and we do it in different ways uh, 
uh, from company to company, industry to industry, which is, I think, the best way to uh, structure compensation programs. So we'll so I'll certainly be pushing in that direction, and I, <laughs> I know others will too. Well, that's great, and uh, we will support you in that fight. <laughs> Terrific. Thanks, Britt. Thank you, Steve. This has been Britt Whitman and Steve Harris on WorkSpan TV.